Dr. Stenu. At this stage, we will have him to take the casket in. Let's keep that background thing going on, then we'll take the casket in, the casket bearers, so you put it on for the family to be seated. And thereafter, the official the minister will take off the program. Thank you very much for your patience.
invite you all, invite you all tonight so that we declare this funeral open by taking for the theocratic source of prayers, number 99. TSP number 99 is on page 5 of the program. May we all please write.
Amen, O gracious Father. For thy goodness, or the goodness of all us, thy children, especially for leading us to this arena in order to accord a befitting burial to our late sister, Sister Mama Adenike Akipendu. We beseech thee, O gracious Father, to send us thy Holy Spirit in order to direct all that we shall say and do in the course of this funeral, all to the honor, glory, fear, and praise of thy holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. El Jehovah and Jesus Christ. El Jehovah and Jesus Christ. Please take your seats. Beloved brothers, sisters, and all our sympathizers here gathered, first and foremost, we give our profound thanks and sincere gratitude to the Most High God Jehovah through our Redeemer Jesus Christ for the grace of life and also for the privilege we have to assemble here this afternoon in order to accord our sister and mother a befitting Christian burial. The Bible tells us that we that are living, we are living by reason of the goodness of God. It is not of our own strength or power, but it is the basis of God upon us. Thus, Jeremiah, the prophet of God, in one of his famous lamentations, as recorded in Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23 declare that it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, that this compassion they fail not, they are new every morning, and great is the faithfulness of God. The purpose of us gathering here today, as we all know, is to accord our late sister a befitting Christian burial. The Bible tells us that man who had not his time, read the Ecclesiastes 9, verses 12, then 6, and verses 12, 5 and 6, please. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verses 12, 5 and 6, where the Bible tells us that no man knows his time. Please read. For man also knoweth not his time. These were the words of King Solomon, one of the prophets of God in ancient time. He declared that for man were not his time, read on, as the fishes that are taken in an evil net, that man and death is like the fishes that are taken in an evil net, read on, and as the birds that are caught in the snare, and even as the nests that are caught in the snare, yes, so are the sons of men snared in an evil time. The Bible then tells us that so are the sons of men snared in an evil time, like the case of our sister and mother, who is lying not only in that casket. Read on. When it falleth suddenly upon them. When it falleth suddenly upon them. Verses 5 and 6. For the living know that they shall die. The Bible then tells us that we that are living, we know that one day death will come. Yes. For the dead know not anything. But the dead, they know not anything. Like as our sister, she is in that casket, she does not know what is happening here. That is the state of death. Continue to read. Neither have they any more a reward. Neither have they any more a reward. In other words, anything that is done on the earth, they don't have part in it. Read on. For the memory of them is forgotten. For the memory of them is forgotten. Continue to read. Also their love. Also their love. The love she had for her children. The love she had for her family. Her church members and so on is forgotten. Read on. And their hatred. And their hatred. And their envy. And even their envy. Is now perished. Is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. The Bible then went further to tell us that they do not have any portion in anything that is done 
under the sun. That is on earth. Freedom. Whatsoever that I'm finding to do, the Bible tells us that we should do it with our minds. Whatsoever so, I have finding to do. So by reason of this, anything our hand finding to do, yes, do it with thy mind. We should do it with our mind. For there is no work. For there is no work. Nor device, nor device, nor knowledge, nor knowledge, nor wisdom, nor wisdom in the grave without thou goest. In the grave without thou goest. So death is not the end of man. The Bible tells us of the cause of death, and there is also a remedy to death. The cause of death. And this remedy. What causes death? The Bible makes it bear on how God Almighty the greatest man and he places it in a beautiful garden. That is the garden of Eden. And God Almighty the third man that of all the trees in the garden, man may truly, truly eat. There is a tree in the midst of the garden that man should not touch it. And that this will not eat it or else he will die. This was the Lord of God compared to the man Adam according to Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. That when the woman he was created, the man Adam then conveyed the message of God to his wife Eve. Then the devil interfered with man. He that he visited the woman in the garden. And then deceived the woman, she then ate of the fruit. According to Genesis chapter 3, verses 1, right down to 6. And by reason of this, the Almighty God became angry with man, like an angry lion with his tenants. And then he told man that in the sweat of thy face shall man eat bread. Now go to Genesis chapter 3. Read me verse 19, please. Genesis chapter 3. Please read me verse 19. In the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread. This was the judgment of God upon man. After man violated his law, and justice demanded that punishment should follow. So God Almighty told man that man will sweat before he will eat bread. And when you look the world today, man must labor. Before he did. And it is also said that there is no food for lazy man. Continue to read. Till thou return unto the ground. And after struggling in life, that will not be the end. Man dies and will return back to the dogs. Read on. For out of it was thou taken. The Bible then tells us that man was taken from the dust of the ground. And medical scientists have admitted to the facts. That the various chemical elements that made up the body of man are found in the dust of the ground. So, needless for any man to be proud or cocky, knowing full well that it is nothing but the dust of the ground. For out of it was thou taken freedom, for dust thou art, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And at death, man returns back to the dust. And that will be the case of our sister and my man. That we are gathered here today to give a befitting Christian burial. That sooner than later to be entered into the grave. The Bible tells us that for those that act and unto those shall thou return. And right from that time that God Almighty made this judgment upon man, the life of man became that of bitterness, sorrow, and also tears. No more than Job, when he was lamenting the frailty of man. In Job chapter 14, he told us that man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of troubles. Read me Job chapter 14, verses 1 to 5, then 13 to 15, please. Man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. Let us take note of this statement of Job. That man that is born of a woman, and all of us assembled here today, we were given birth to my women. The Bible tells us that we have few days on earth. And even at that, it's filled with troubles. 
Look at the death of our mama, 88 years. What is 88 years in the sight of God? It's nothing. And at that, man, we have a struggle with other problems associated with man. So that I used to say, which I also said during the condolent visit to the family, that I've never seen any man who is up to the age of 30 and has never suffered any setback in life. Maybe it may be by way of data, it may be by way of headache, it may be by way of cold, or any other, other setback in life. If you have seen, then know that that person is a time born, and sooner or later the person will explode. So the Bible is telling us that a man that is born of a woman is a few that are full of troubles. Look at the world today. You will see man because of the troubles associated with man. Putting on face mask. Sometimes you will see your own brother on the way you cannot identify him. These are the problems that are associated with man. Continue to read. He coming forth like a flower. That he coming forth like a flower. And is cut down. And is cut down. He fears also as a shadow. And also as a shadow. And continueth not. And before you see, the person is no more. Carry on. And does thou put thy eyes upon such a one? Read on. And bringest me into judgment with thee. Continue to read. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Don't be proper that ask. That who is that person that can bring a clean thing out of the unclean? The Lord aware. No imperfect man can redeem sinful mankind from sin and death. That was the major reason why the Almighty God, in His infinite love and mercy, sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Into the world to liberate man from sin and death. Read on. Not one. Not one. Continue to read, please. Seeing his days are determined. The Bible then tells us that the days of man is determined. In other words, the days that we are going to live in this world, even on the day that we were born, God Almighty knew. Read on. The number of his bones. The number the of our bones is in the hand of God. Like the case of Mama. 88 years ago when she was born, the Almighty God knew that the time to spend in this sinful world will be 88 years. That the number of our days, even the months, are in the hands of God. Read on. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. And that God Almighty has appointed the bounds to every man on earth. And when that time comes for death, he can never exceed it. Now go to 13. Right at the 15, we are told the prophet that makes it bad that there is a remedy to death. And that remedy to death is that God Almighty will bring the dead back to life again. And the time will come when we will destroy death. No one I impossible. Chapter 13, verse 14, the Bible tells us, in fact, it was God Almighty speaking through the prophet Moses and declared that I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem death from death. All oh, death, I will be thy day. All oh, grave, I will be thy destruction. And repentance shall be in from my eyes. In other words, the time is coming that God Almighty will destroy death and man will live forever in paradise. Thus, drop down, recounted the resurrection of the dead. Read 13 now, right back to 15. Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave. Let Job the prophet declare that at death, God Almighty will keep him in the grave. Just like the case of Mama, very soon to be entered into the grave. Read on. That thou wouldest keep me in secret. And that God Almighty will keep him secret in the grave. Read on. Until thy wrath be passed. Until the indignation or the fierce anger of God that will come upon the wicked. Will be passed. And that anger is fast impending with each passing day. Read on. That thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. Job the prophet then stated that God Almighty will appoint to him a set time and will remember him. He was talking about the day of the resurrection of the day. Read on. If a man die, he then asked a very important question. That if a man dies, yeah, shall he live again? Shall he live again? Like the case of a man who is dead and lying motionless in that casket, shall she live again? Don't make the answer. Continue to read. 
all the days of my appointed time will I wait. That's all the days of this appointed time will you wait. Wait me in the grave. Yes. Till my change come. Until this change will come. And that change will be at the resurrection of the dead. Read on. Thou shalt call. That when God Almighty shall call through his beloved Lord Jesus Christ, whom he has blessed, the power to bring the dead back to life. When he will come, yes. And I will answer thee. And Job will answer. And the case of Mama will not be different. Read on. Thou will have a desire to the work of thy hands. Then God Almighty will reward him according to his works. Job then went further. In Job chapter 19, verse 25 and 26, to talk about the resurrection of the dead also. When he declared that I know that my redeemer liveth. And it shall stand upon the earth at the latter day that though after my skin once we destroy this body, but yet in my flesh shall I see God. Then the prophet Isaiah also spoke concerning the resurrection of the dead. According to Isaiah chapter 26, verse 19, when he declared that my dead men shall live, and together with my dead body shall they arise, awake and sing, he that dwell in the doors. For thy dew is as the dew of earth, and the earth shall cast out the dead. He was talking about the resurrection of the dead. Ezekiel, the prophet in Ezekiel, the disciple, spoke at length concerning the resurrection of the dead. The report was his one, right out of 14, when he was privileged by God to see a picture on how the resurrection will look like. And then, amongst all that, he made something pertinent there. Just read verse 14, please. Ezekiel chapter 37, read verse 14. Yes. And I shall put my spirit in you. God Almighty declares through the prophet Ezekiel that he will put the spirit in the dead. Because what Mama is lacking there in that casket is the breath of life. But on that day of the resurrection of the dead, the breath of life will be given back to the dead, and they will come back to life again. Read on. And ye shall live. And the dead they shall live again. Continue to read. And I shall place you in your own land, which will take note of this. That at the resurrection of the dead, every man will be placed in his own native land. So if somebody is from Ibada, then the person dies in the United States of America and may be buried there. On the day of resurrection, God Almighty will place that person in his own native land. Read on. Then shall you know that I, the Lord, have spoken it. Then the source of faith that we know that he, the Lord, the Almighty God, has spoken it. And performed it. And he which will be performing. Said the Lord. Said the Lord. Then our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. In John chapter 5, verses 28 and 29, also spoke concerning the resurrection of the dead, when he declared that marvel not at this. For the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. That they that are done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that are done evil unto the resurrection of damnation, they will be judged and punished according to their sin. But to wrap up, Read me first Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13, 14, and 18. But I will not help you to be ignorant, brethren. So, beloved brothers, sisters, and other sympathizers, we do not be ignorant about the resurrection of the dead. Read on. Concerning them which are asleep. Concerning them which are asleep. What Apostle Paul is saying here, he wasn't referring to the natural state that we return to our best. That he was talking of the sleep of death. It is that sleep that our sister, Sister Adebike, she is sleeping in that casket. The Bible tells us that we should not be ignorant concerning those who are sleeping the sleep of death. Freedom. That ye sorrow not. He then went for that to tell us, not to be sorrowful. By this, Apostle Paul does not mean that when we lost our beloved ones, we should be about rejoicing. Read on. Even as others which have no hope. But the condition is that we should not be sorrowful like those who don't have hope. Those who don't have hope, when they lost their beloved ones, you will see that they will show their head. 
what they call Moro Moro. Then some of them will put on black clothes, even for months, some for years. So we put on white clothes and they are mourning for the day. So on both of the ends, they got drawing tattoo on their skin for the day. The Bible tells us that those who believe in the resurrection of the dead, they will desist from that. We know. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, that if we truly believe that Jesus Christ died and God Almighty brought him back to life again, yeah. even so them also we sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him? Even so them also we sleep with Jesus, will God bring with him? Like the case of our mama, she believed in the resurrection of the dead. She believed that Jesus Christ died. And God Almighty brought him back to life again. So also will be our case that on the day of resurrection, she shall come back to life again. Verse 18, please. Wherefore, wherefore, beloved brothers, sisters, and other sympathizers, we know, comfort one another with these words. We should be consoled with these words. I thank you all for listening to me. Thank you. So the best item we shall be having on the program will be the five parts. But before we take that, the order of the five parts, the organist will lead us to take TSP 103 to Kratos Sons of Grace, number 103, is on page 6 of the program. Thank you. Casket bearers can now open the casket for the five parts. But after the song, we are going to call out Brother Essen on Nakugoto, or General and Mega Paddle on Nakugoto, who will read out the order of five parts. The organ is please. 103 on page 6 of the program.
of the five plants. Well, I could go top please. Thank you.